This pastor, Anis Shorosh, who is an Arab Christian born in the city of Nazareth and speaks Arabic as a native tongue, claimed that the Quran somehow affirms the Trinity from the word Bismillah. That when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we see the Trinity 113 times in the Quran, like the Bible says, Bismillah wal ibn wa ruhi qudus. These are the kinds of baseless, inane accusations we often hear from the Christians, even ones supposedly to be knowledgeable expert and a critique of Islam and the Quran. How did the good Sheikh respond to such ignorant claim? question is for Mr. Didat. A quotation, I and the Father are one. In the Greek, the word one is neuter, denoting one in essence and one in nature, not just one in purpose. Mr. Didat, would you like to comment? This one in Greek is hen, H-E-N, hen. Hen. One. Now, the same word hen is used in John chapter 17, where Jesus is speaking to God Almighty. He says, I am one with you, and you with me, and the disciples with me. I in thee, and thou in me. We are all one. Hen. Same hen. So now, if this one makes one in that bodily form, like a sausage, one becomes like a sausage with God, or Jesus becomes one with God as a sausage because it says this is one means one. Like Adam and Eve, the Bible says that they twain shall be one flesh, one sausage. No, in purpose, same word in Greek, hen. The same word in Greek, hen, for the disciples of including Thomas and, and Judas, all of them, we are one with you, I with you, God Almighty, and you with me, they are one with me and I with, in them. Now that oneness, I'm asking, what oneness? Same hen in Greek. Does it mean that they all became a sausage? All the twelve disciples and the traitor Judas and with God and Jesus become a sausage? No. This one is in purpose and not in body or power or omnipotent or omniscience. In their eagerness to raise the status of Jesus as divine, but lacking clear verses in the Bible that agrees with this position, this verse from John 17 is often the go-to verse for the Christians even today as indisputable proof that the Bible is very clear about the divinity of Jesus. But this verse is clearly ascribing not just Jesus to be one with God, but the other disciples as well, using the very same term in both cases. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. So Jesus is saying, the one that sent Jesus is the only true God. So Jesus is saying that the one God that sent him is the only true God, and Jesus was sent by God, not God. Before Abraham was, I am. I am. And I am the Father. Sure, I got you. I and the Father are one, but Jesus also said, I and the disciple and the Father are one. So when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, that doesn't mean that they're the same person. Like we say, we're one nation. Like he says, the disciples are one in us. That means they're united in purpose and cause. Like we say, we're one nation. We are one in us. So what that means, as Muslim, we say we're one nation, or as America, we say we're one nation under God, right? It means one in purpose. Yet they wanted us Muslims to accept this interpretation as proof of divinity that somehow, when it comes to Jesus, double standards are applied, and any hint of the divinity of Jesus must be immediately accepted. Clearly, many Christians doesn't read the Bible very closely, if at all. For Dr. Shirosh, what do you mean by the statement, Jesus is Son of God? The questioner wants to say, with my full respect, do you mean Jesus is direct Son of God, Son of the God, as I am the Son of my Father? Or do you have another meaning? Would you please explain? If you would please remember 
that it is a spiritual title. God never married anybody. God is a triune God. And I'd like to urge you to consider that when we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we see the Trinity 113 times in the Quran, like the Bible says, Bismillah wal ibn wa ruhul qudus. We must love one another. We must recognize the truth of God in Christ, reconciling you to Himself. Thank you. Mr. Dinat, could you please explain how God could save the world as the New Testament claims if Jesus was not God coming in the flesh? Let me first correct my brother Shurosh about Bismillah rahman rahim You see, Bismillah rahman rahim means in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Allah, Allah, who is most gracious, most merciful, and He's those those 99 attributes. That is Allah. He is not 99 gods. He is not three in one. Whereas the Christian formula is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Three. This pastor who is debating Sheikh Didat Anis Shorosh is a Palestinian evangelical Christian author and speaker. Being an evangelical and an Islam critique, he holds quite a lot of controversial and blasphemous opinions about Islam over his many decades of evangelical work and preaching. He was even arrested once and charged with first-degree attempted arson for allegedly burning tax records of his religious organization in an attempt to set his building on fire. He had since passed on in 2018. How does God save the world? That was the question. How does he save? There is only one way. And the way is, believe in God and do good deeds. This is what Jesus says. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, most assuredly, I'm telling you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you are better than the Jew, there is no heaven for you. That is the way of salvation. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to Islamica to support our efforts. Thank you.